Lagos, check your time, it's three minutes gone past the hour of 11, I say welcome and a refreshing morning to you. How do you do? Welcome. It is the On Air Book Club, right here on your number one family radio inspiration 92.3 FM. My name is Thelma Illams, and yes, I'm doing this with Okiki Akindele, who is just, you know, can I say just a wink away? Let me put it that way. Okay, so we're not alone today. We have ourselves a very, very interesting, interesting guest an author in the studio with us so i will let you know who this very special person is he is the publisher editor-in-chief of yes international magazine and convener of the yes international magazine annual lecture a member of the nigerian guild of editors guild of corporate online publishers and associate member of the nigerian institute of public relations he served as the editor of Encoming weekly oh. So I guess some people are like, I think I know who that is. Well, when I'm done, you find out if you're, you know, correct or not. And so, yes, he served as the editor of Incoming Weekly between 2003 and 2011. And before that, as a 26-year-old, he edited Real Stars magazine. He was named Africa's Best Entertainment Writer in 2010 by the organizers of African Film Awards in the UK. And he plays Ambassador Rose for Nigeria's Federal Safety Corps, National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDAEA, and the Lagos State Government Ministry of Environment. My goodness, there's more. But I always like to let people know out there that when you find yourself a very successful and achieving, um, let me say, young Nigerian, um, I like to let you know that what this person is not alone. So he's married. Yes, he married to Unkali and blessed with two adorable children. I don't want to murder the name, so I'm just going to respect myself and leave the... I'm tempted, I'm tempted. Can I give it a try? No. Do it, do it, do it, do it. <laughs> no, I'm not going to give it a try. But anyway, Lagos, um, ladies and gentlemen, please make welcome <laughs> our guest, amazing guest, special author and author of what not just this book in my hand which is a taste of success by the way his name is azu arinze <laughs> good morning sir good morning it's an awesome awesome pleasure to have you same same here how are you today i'm doing good okay all right so um this is what we do here. We're going straight into the mind of our author, Azua Rinze, today in the book. He titles, A Taste of Success. I want to believe that this is part of the writer. Uh, it says, A worthy and interesting compilation of the life stories and careers of eminent and successful people across different spectrums. My goodness, there are lots. I don't know how he got them seated, but we'll find out if it was by seating or technology happened by mm. phone lines or Zoom. i'm not even sh exactly but we'll find out but let's just you know um take a little um peek into a taste of success by as well so we'll be right back a taste of success a worthy and interesting compilation of the life stories and careers of eminent and successful people across different spectrums, written by Azua Rinze and read by Thelma Illums. Now, this is one of the conversations in the book that he had with Akachi Adimora Ezigo, how to stand out as a woman in any field. Before I go into the excerpt, I'd like to let you know that Professor Akachi Adimora Ezigo currently and comfortably plays in the septuagenarian club, but not even that or any other thing has stopped her from doing what she loves so much, which is what? Teaching and writing, and I'm sure there's even more to that. And so here's how that conversation went. How can a woman stand out in any field she is into and also not be intimidated by the men folk, especially in the areas of interest and specialization. Hard work, she said. Determination and self-confidence pay. Hmm. Parents, especially mothers, must raise their daughters properly by inculcating in them the virtues of hard work and equip them with the best education available. When a woman is educated in the best tradition and works hard and is confident in herself, she will stand out in any field. 
She will maximize her abilities and strengths in any profession in which she finds herself, be it business, medicine, law, engineering, teaching, media, banking, politics, you know, just name it. Such a woman can never be intimidated. Goodness me, I hope that this is how she sounded when she was answering. <laughs> okay, so there's more. And so she was asked, some people also say that women are the greatest enemies. Do you agree with that? And this is how she responded. No, I have never believed in such platitudes, she says. Some of the best people I knew when I was growing up were women. My mother had the best of friends among women and they impacted her life. I too have had great women friends who have made a difference in my life and whose lives I have touched positively. No one is perfect, neither men nor women. There are bad men, just as there are bad women who delight in hurting and damaging others. There are bad women who have even destroyed other women, just as there are more, what many more, who have encouraged and empowered many women. The same is the case with men. I often wonder why people say women are their greatest enemies, but no one says men are their greatest enemies. But we know that more men have destroyed other men than the number of women who have destroyed other women. I don't know about that. So, let us forget such cliches and focus on how, as women and men, we can build one another up and support one another. And that's as much as I can take as an excerpt from the book, A Taste of Success, a worthy and interesting compi compilation of the life stories and careers of eminent and successful people across different spectrums, written by author in the studio, Azu Arinze, who is the best-selling actor of uh, the CEO's Bible and success has not served a la carte. <laughs> All right, Lagos, we'll go back into the conversation. We'll be right back. Inspiration FM. All right, it's the Honor Book Club right here on your number one family radio. It's Inspiration 92.3 FM. Boy, it's good to be here. I was here on, I was on like two weeks ago, right? With the kids. Yes. With yes, the child so authors. Know. Right. Okay, so it's amazing. So uh, our author today is Azu Arinze. One of his books he titles. Um, a taste of success and yes indeed it's like what you actually heard it's a compilation um, of the life stories and careers of eminent and successful people across different spectrums so for those of you who are just you know, and say ah, this IWD international women when is it going to be over because everything <laughs> I hear on radio now is women this women that but trust me when I picked up this book and decided to read the except it wasn't deliberate but this one just you know caught my attention and I'm like yeah I think we should go with this what better time hmm so no, don't get tired. Just for how to support us, you know, and just keep supporting us all the way. Mm. So my very first question, I think I already asked that question even before now, which is how did you successfully get all of these notable personalities? Because I've gone through them. How, how many are they? 25. 25. And, 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 and not just a small 25. Yes. Yeah, these are big 25. So two generations. Like, I mean, the ones with younger <laughs> ages, but with big minds, and, big and minds. I'm just wondering. And they're just, and they're from, because I, I, I took a look at the different ones, they're from mm -hmm. different walks of life. life so yeah. we have an actor in there, we mm -hmm. have um, Alilu who in there, mm -hmm. we have um, Senior Beatty in there, right. we have... Um, Sego Soba. Yes, and then there's also... Um, uh, Anselm. So, so, so we have a pastor, we have an actor, mm -hmm. we have a, someone in the court. It cuts up, it cuts up. Yeah. Right. It's totally unbiased. There's so no, it wasn't how? for a selected few. So how did you, how were you able to? I, I, I said, sit all of these people down. People and down. I said, you probably <laughs> sit them down. I don't know how you got working with it. Well, I, I think um, one advantage that I have is that I'm a journalist. Mm -hmm. And you know, journalism tends to bring you in constant contact mm -hmm. with a lot of people. But uh, we are most journalist get it wrong is not being able to maximize and harness that um, opportunity you know because one of the greatest gifts you know that we tend to enjoy as journalists mm -hmm. is access right. so when you have that access what do you do with that access some journalists they see people they ask them for this favor, that favor. Mm -hmm. i'm not trying to do that 
I mean, you, you can ask people for one or two favors, you know, but people are, especially those who have excelled, those who have done well, those who have succeeded, you find out that they tend to delight in sharing their stories mm. because they know that in doing that, other people also um, learn and stuff. Mm. Now, when you've proven yourself to be competent, to be reliable, to be someone who um, will not misquote them, who will say that what you do, you find out that, you know, they, they, they begin to grant you audience. Mm. And don't forget that I've been into journalism you know, over 25 years. So in the course of practicing journalism, I've come in contact with a whole lot of people. Um, without meaning to sound um, boastful or something, I think my entire me. career, I would have interviewed <laughs> over 500 quality people. When I say quality people, I'm okay, talking about... Away. It's, 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 yeah, it's, uh, I'm talking about <laughs> bank MDs, mm -hmm. including uh, Dr. Rasmus Akimbola. Right. I remember I, I interviewed him as the editor of Encomio. Right. So I have interviewed bank MDs, I have interviewed the top of the world, I have interviewed some of the most respected Nigerians. Mm -hmm. I mean, once you are Nigerian and you're doing well and people are talking about you, I get this key, you know, I get. Mm. I want to talk to you. You know, I begin to put the machinery in motion. You know, trying to find out how to pin you down, how to sit down with you and talk to you. You know, I, I remember at some point I went to interview a couple of people from uh, Mr. Tunde Lemo. You know, who was running uh, Wema Bank then to Professor Patrick Tony then, and everybody kept talking about uh, Dr. Christopher Kolabi, and I wanted to interview him. Unfortunately, I, I didn't have his contact. But you know, something happened. One day I was looking through the dailies and I found out that he was coming somewhere to give a lecture at some point. Mm -hmm. And I have always known that when you dress well, okay, when you dress well, you carry yourself well, mm -hmm. you speak well, you are sound, you are bright, you are intelligent, and so people will respect you. So what mm -hmm. I did was to, I, I, I got myself well dressed that morning. I went to the thing even without being invited mm -hmm. you know and i found out that serious people get to events on time mm. serious people i mean i remember when i had one of my annual lectures you know um mr Gary Shobanjo, who is one of the biggest advertising practitioners was supposed to be our chairman and when the guest speaker came, the guest speaker that year was uh, Mr. Lola mm -hmm. When he came and he said, uh, where is Bibi? You know, I think the man's nickname is Bibi. Mm -hmm. I said, I hadn't seen him. He said, no. That the man gets to wherever he's going, minimum 25 or 30 minutes before the time. And eventually we found out that the man was at the venue so was in the car. Mm -hmm. You know, so... Over time, I've picked one or two lessons from mm. them. I mean, now, back to um, Dr. Christopher Collado. About 30 minutes before the time, I saw him alighting from his car and walking into the room. So I jumped down from my car. I leveled up with him. I tried to help him with the code that he was holding, but he wouldn't allow me. Anyway, he probably thought I was part of the organizers of the game. <laughs> but while we were inside the meeting, and I introduced myself. And I think that the journalist, I'd like to talk to him. But the man said he came there for a lecture, you know. But I persisted. You know, eventually we ended up discussing. You know, Nigerians don't respect time. Mm. You know, you give someone an appointment for 11 o'clock, he comes there at 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock. Mm. Even the organizers of the show ended up starting very late. Because I remember that the man said, oh, the event I came for was start at social time. You know, he said, I'm quoting him now. He said, this young man that will not take no for an answer. What exactly do you say you want from me? I said, just a, a short interview. He said, how long? I said, 15 minutes. He said, no, five minutes. But you know what? We ended up talking for, for an hour. Time. Because the people we who invited started. him, they came late. Hmm. And that is also one thing that people need to understand. When you're conducting an interview, 
if you ask interesting questions, mm -hmm. it will get interesting answers. Right. And if you make the interview interesting and mm -hmm. exciting, mm -hmm. the people don't want to go. You know, so I've had instances like that. You know, there are those that I will write. I'm not saying that all the people are waiting to that they have responded. I've made attempts to interview uh, Mr. Jimovia. I ran into him at an event. You know, he said I should hold on. Eventually, he declined. You know, one person I want to interview is Tony Lumoli. Incidentally, I deal with it. media people because they, 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 they get across to me every time you're all from time to time you know but you know something happened the first day i was opportune to be in the same place with him i was like i was so dumbfounded i couldn't say anything <laughs> it was at nikon noga you know both of us i just i was in the inside the lift i was going down and the lift stopped at one of the floors and he came in you know i was just moping uh, very very unlike me because once i see you mm -hmm. immediately i bring up my tape recorder or my phone and i begin to ask questions after introducing myself i remember the day i interviewed uh, one of the biggest lawyers in nigeria one of the most respected lawyers in nigeria his name is the uh, ocj okocha i mean i had gone to this myself you know i, I think it was a big quarter 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 or so and i saw him i looked up and i saw him I greeted him and introduced myself and I said, I would like to have an interview. The, 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 the problem again is that most times we don't ask. Mm. You know, if you ask, you know, the Bible says if you knock, the door will be open for you. But mm. most times we, we, we don't do that. So I have tried. You know, sometimes it works out fine. Sometimes it doesn't work out fine. But I've come to realize that you don't win all the time. Mm. But I have won more than I have lost. Right. But I think that's what compensates for everything. Okay. One thing I take is intentionality. Mm -hmm. is you're, 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 you're always being intentional and you're always prepared in case the intentional does not happen and you just happen to, you know, there's a chance meeting. Like you said, you're always ready to look out your as, as, as a young man, I was a member of the Boy Scout and our motto <laughs> there was prepared. Be, be, be prepared. So at every point in time, if I bump into anybody anytime, I know what to ask you. I know what question to ask you. Mm -hmm. But what, what, what I normally do is when I'm working a, on a book, usually I get a title first. Mm -hmm. After getting the title now, I now begin to look at those who fit into that title. You know, so all my books, there are reasons for them. I don't just wake up and begin to, to, to write. It's yes, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, ah. Yeah, go ahead. You want to say <laughs> so I'll tell you what, it's just been quite a lecture because only one question I ask you. <laughs> 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 you know, you said to me, I asked all the question I was supposed to ask. Right, but there's ahead. something that I really needed to answer. We're going to take a break. When we come back in, yeah. so you know, there's this thing amongst us as journalists. When we won't ask questions, we'll ask questions direct. You know, <laughs> you go like this, you rig my role, you rig my role, and then you eventually land. And then before you know, the person you're asking the question is like, um, what is your question exactly? <laughs> but then I look at your style of writing, which also which also connotes, you know, your style of interviewing when you ask questions. Questions are so direct. How do you maintain that sanity of just sticking to what it is actually and not speaking all the plenty grammar inside? And I don't know how that happens. But let's take a break, ladies. Yeah. When we come back, we'll find out from yes, our very <laughs> special author, Azura Rinsey. Don't go away. Okay. When it comes to ask, asking questions. Mm. Um, Hello, journalists. How mm -hmm. how do we maintain the level playing field of just hitting you know the question as it is? I'll give you some examples in your book. Um, what got you interested in writing? Um, some of us. How how would we have gone with this very simple question? Now? Why did you become a writer? Um, over time, writing has been overrated, <laughs> and not so many people <laughs> take to writing. I'm not. This is not me dissing my fellow journalists, yeah. but. I'm just saying it's something that just really happens a lot of the time. You're like, mm -hmm. are you serious with me? Is this question? This question that you what got to? you interested in writing? This is all you wanted to ask, <laughs> you know? So how do you do it, sir? Well, the, the, the first step is once you identify who you want to interview, mm -hmm. you sit down and write down the question. Mm -hmm. You know, like while I was waiting for this interview to be done, 
have an interview this evening at 6 p.m. Mm. I was drafting my, 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 my question. Okay. And another thing he gave So what, is, he helps you prepare, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. so once, once you about put those things down, down it helps. Mm. You know, because when you're, you're, you're writing, mm. you, you, you think better, you're better organized. I agree. Yeah, but that is not to discountenance the place of impromptu interviews. Mm. Some of those interviews, there are people that you bump into yeah. the here or there, but you know, over time with experience, mm. you know how to frame your question, okay. you know how to structure your question, mm -hmm. so as to get what you want. Okay, let me just switch your mind a little. Oh, do we have that time? About 60 seconds. I wonder how you feel for every single time you've probably had to interview what a great woman a uh, septuagenarian like the one you interviewed here when you ask them oh women are greatest are their greatest enemies and they tell you eh -huh, what about men men <laughs> how did you feel at the moment when you know well the the, the truth is mm -hmm. a journalist should never be scared mm -hmm. asking questions mm -hmm. okay. you know but what i always advise my reporters is the difficult questions you save them for the last because okay. you had instances where you, you go to interview people, it starts with a question that they consider or they find embarrassing. Mm -hmm. They can call off the interview. Mm -hmm. So you, you, you tend to build up gradually, 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 maybe towards the end of the program. You cannot ask the difficult uh, Once. question. But mm -hmm. I have found out that, I mean, no question is too heavy for anybody to, mm -hmm. to respond to. Sure. Mm -hmm. Kata, they will say, no comment. No comment. All right. That's fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, Dr. Ar I, did I say doctor? I claim it. it. You claim it. <laughs> it's a good thing. So let's leave it at that. Uh, Dr. Azu <laughs> Arinze. Amen. Say amen. Amen. To that. Amen. amen. The author of the book, A Taste of Success, a worthy, yes, indeed, I absolutely agree, an interesting compilation of stories and careers of eminent and successful people across different spectrums. Goodness me, I've said that like what? Countless times. Um, where can people get this book? Well, the book is going to be unveiled oh. on March 24. You know, okay. we're, we're bringing it to coincide with my birthday. And afterwards, Ooh, you mean you're over 45, sir? Yes, I am. Well, I'm going to be 50 next week. Whoa! <laughs> Happy birthday in advance, sir. Thank you. you all know, right. So after Thursday, all the bookshops. Okay. Um, you know, yeah, but. I mean, you can also give us a call, okay. or if you need autographed copies, okay. come to what's, our office. Where's where's that? Okay, twenty nine Borderland Street. Okay, Grammar School, Ojodu, Lagos. Okay, so if you come to the office, I'll autograph for you. Amazing, thank you very much. I will appreciate you. May God bless the work of your hands. And I hope you oblige us when yeah. we invite you next time. No problem, anytime. All right, thank anytime. you so much, like us for being a part of the show. But you know, let me announce your listening ears. We appreciate you. The headline is up next with Diego Kilpen. Did you enjoy this video? Hit the subscribe button for more, leave a comment and like. Thank you.